Okay, let's work our way around this tool. When you're using an air spindle, you really don't want to be too far out. So we're going to make an adjustment now. And we're just rotating the air spindle, so. <clears throat> we're gonna grind this single bevel tooth first. Uh, so you wanna line that tooth up so that it's vertical. Engage your front lock ring. Whether you have a pro spindle or a regular cutter master spindle or JX spindle, you can do this. This is a radius air, so it's a little bit different layout, but same same idea. <clears throat> what we've done here, when you're using the JX, there's a scale here, or there's marks on the casting. And you come around here, this is a zero. <clears throat> right about there. So where the set screw is is zero. It's two, um, 200 graduations around this thing. So each graduation is a half thou. That's a 10, uh, 10 pitch screw. So when that is at zero, then this spindle is about center with this. So we want to come up about an inch. So we're going to come up 10 revolutions. We're going to stop at zero. Doesn't matter exactly. All you're trying to do is figure out what it takes to match the existing grinds. And in this case, we are at zero. We're going to set this at about 10 degrees, just so we have a little bit of clearance. And give that a snug. We have the indexing collar engaged. <clears throat> this is a 510 indexing collar. So we're using the single numeral five as the single bevel teeth. When you go to the slot that says 510, two numerals, it's gonna have two grinds on it. That's just so we can keep track of it. So. <clears throat> now we've come up, so we're about, a, we've uh, <clears throat> rotated the air spindle, so it's about 10 degrees. We've come up about an inch off center, so now we are, we've got a little clearance angle as a byproduct of the wheel shape, and we're just gonna go around and touch these up. We're gonna feed with the table. You're resting against the <clears throat> front ring here, so it'll, it'll swing. Just come in to touch. Just, just come across. For the next tooth. Make sure you move that wheel far enough away so you don't ding like that. <clears throat> so what I do is when I, my first position, I make it near the set screw on the indexing collar so I can keep track of number one. And now we're back to our first one. Should just be light. Yeah. So there's your first grind. Uh, purpose of this video is to show you how you can get to these different grinds. The JXT has a very articulate head on it. And you can tip this head up, tilt it this way. The reason we're using a fluting wheel, the concept with the fluting wheel is that you can get in and create these gullets. So just raise the motor, put this in an orientation and you can come in and you can, you can cut, you can move the whole tooth profile down the, the tool length. Um, GXT, you can grind pretty much anything with it. Now we're going to set up to do the uh, double grind teeth.
Okay, now we're going to set up to do the um, the grind on the teeth, which is every other tooth that has a double grind. It's got a little bit of a clearance grind uh, on, on a radial on the outside. <clears throat> the tooth has both radial and axial clearance. So we're going to raise this wheel up to 1.5, tighten the gibbs, and bring this in. And that's pretty close to what we need. So, um, move this away. We'll just walk around this tool and pick up this grind. This is grind number two of three. I think we're going to go up another 100 so it's a 1.6 see how that works we're still at 10 degrees here that's pretty good so now we'll just walk around grind number two If you want a nice finish, speed the wheel up, go a little slower. This is just a demonstration video to show you that you can do annular cutters on a JXD. It doesn't take a lot of time. Okay, that's grind number two. Okay, to get grind number three, grind number three is actually inside and it has clearance toward the center line of the tool. So we have set the motor at 900. We tip the head to about 20 degrees. Make sure we're all locked in place there. Set screws are tight. Now we're we'll going to get this other grind. Should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, it looks like we want a little more clearance, so we are going to move this to 15 degrees and see how, see how that works. I think it looks pretty good. Okay, index and call in place. Until we touch. It's good. Remember to make sure you're far enough away that you don't clip the wheel when you index to the next loop.
that's all there is to it. You want to keep track of your length. <clears throat> all annular cutter manufacturers and tool designers have a method for keeping the chatter down. This method can be staggering the tooth length. In some cases, every other tooth has an elevation difference. It could be two to five thousandths. <clears throat> In some cases, like these cutters, this one has a radical double grind every other tooth and a single grind on this tooth. This one has a big flat grind and just a little clearance grind here on every other tooth. So you want to keep in mind what the engineer had planned for the tool when you start to readdress his grind. Your best thing is to just go and pick up the grind and learn the geometry. Hogan's got a certain style. Morris has a style. There's probably five different, uh, well, at least five different uh, geometries on tool ends that I know of. With the JXT, you can pick up pretty much any grind. So you can tip and twist this head, anything, any attitude that you need to get into sharpen your tool. So anyway, thanks for watching.